Hi, it's a winter Sunday, well, almost winter, and I'm thinking about spinning because I like warm things. Now, I do have this beautiful drop spindle. It's called a Kundart, Kundart spindle. Oh, you can't see that. Oh, there it is. Okay, it's a Kundart spindle, and I got it at the Woolery or Paradise Fibers. I forget where I got it. And for any of you who like drop spindles, this is a really nice one. It's got a lot of contour to it. It's beautifully finished. It's beautiful. But I didn't want to ruin this while I was out working at my lunch hour. And I thought it would be really neat as I'm walking down the country roads near my work to do my own spindling. So what I did was I created my own paper mache drop spindle. Now it's a little wobbly, um, as you can gather. It was made from the lid of like one of those coffee cans, just a, uh, what size? Five inch maybe, four and a half inch, something like that. And I put a little mini moo that I cut out, one of those little creamers. I just cut out the, the top of the creamer so that I had a little bit of um, extra elevation there. And then I just stuck a pencil through the whole thing. So this this is a hexagonal Ticonderoga pencil or something with the rubber eraser on the top. And then I just uh, scissored up a paper clip so that I had a paper clip, but then I realized how dangerous it was because it was really sharp on the bottom. So I decided to encase that entire thing. So what I encased it in, I just used paper mache, flour and water, and torn up pieces of paper to um, make the whole thing paper mache. But then what I did was I added several layers of gesso on it. That smooths out all of those tears and stuff that you see. And the whole thing is really lumpy, but I think once I paint it, um, it's going to be really cheerful. Um, and probably if I make it busy enough, you probably won't notice all that stuff. But regardless, it doesn't matter. It's a drop spindle. It's for function. So that's why I thought it would be really cool to marry my two favorite hobbies, which are yarn crafts and paper mache, and create a tool that I can use to bridge myself from going from one hobby to the other. Oh, gosh. Okay, now I'm just going to create the leader. As you all know, that there's a leader that you need to attach to make your drop spindling work correctly. And um, you just take a piece of roving, this is roving, this is just a different color, and you just spin it up a little bit with your fingers. That's all you do. And then you make a square knot. Um, I'm going to try to do this without botching it up. Square knot, simple square knot. And do I have that? Yes. Okay, there's a square knot. And you know what, this is not, this will never do. It still needs to be spun up a little bit to make it a little bit stronger. Spinning clockwise, just so that it start, starts to resemble an actual string or fiber. Okay, now keep spinning it because it's still very, okay. Luckily this yarn has a lot of fuzzies in it and um, it's, it really does spin like a dream. You can see how, let's see if you can see, see see how much crimp and stuff there is in that? That's that's good. That's good for a beginner spinner. It, okay, so now it's a little bit wobbly, right? Okay, now we're going to start with our real yarn. Okay. Now, I usually stand when I spin, and I use my belly to park the uh, spindle when I see that it, it's supposed to be going uh, clockwise. But if you, it, it'll start losing its torque after a while, you know, unless you keep continuously spinning it, and it'll start going counterclockwise. And at that point, I just stick my belly out and I stop it like that. But I, I, I don't use the park, sit and park method. I use the stand and belly park method. Okay, so let's just see what happens here. The other thing I do is I just keep my roving at about eight inches because I find that it just flops right into itself and it just drives me crazy. Okay, there we go. We're doing our spinning. Spin, spin, spin. Jump, jumping the rope, uh, my fingers, I can 
you see this jumping my fingers every once in a while because I just want to keep that thickness about even and then just I keep jumping my finger and it just spins up like a dream okay it stopped now I need to spin it again oh. and uh, can you see this okay well you're getting the idea now let me just show what this yarn looks like once I take it off here and I stick it on the base of the spindle. Whoops. That is one thing I wish I had done maybe a little bit differently because that notch in the coffee lid is... Um... But you can see when I show you here that this is a nice quality yarn job. See? On a what? Let's see, this spindle probably cost me, um, okay, there was a coffee lid, that was free, the mini moo, that was free, paper clip, two cents, four cents, uh, the pencil, I was going to discard it anyway because the eraser was so lousy, um, so that's, what, four cents, um, probably about 20 cents worth of masking tape because I masked the whole thing before I put on my paper mache, a spoonful of flour, um, you know, what's that? Ten cents? Less than that. And so the masking tape and the gesso were the, the two big investments in this thing. But probably the whole thing cost me a dollar. And it's perfectly functional. And if you had to buy one of these in the stores, um, they usually, maybe, you could get one for maybe $14. That's a beginner one. I don't know if it spins any better than this. This, this does spin okay. Now, once I cover it with, um, I do plan to cover it with paint and make it very decorative, like you see, like a top. And also, then I would probably cover it with like a matte Mod Podge. And um, then I'm golden. I can walk my country roads and spin, spin my, my roving. So anyway, that's my plan. I'm going to stick to it. Cheers.